Oh, and welcome back to Professor True Love's Concepts for Nurses series, and I am Professor Terry True Love. In this episode, we will be looking at vascular disease, but specifically atherosclerosis, which will lead us into coronary artery diseases. Sources for this episode include E's Med Surge Nursing and Soul's Introduction to Critical Care Nursing. In order to understand atherosclerosis and its impact on the body, it is important that we understand how the normal blood vessels should function and how should they should look. So there are normally three layers, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. Remember that arterial walls are thicker than venous walls to accommodate the increased pressures. Uh, there are elastic arteries, which are found near the heart. There are muscular or distributing arteries, which are the thick tunica media. And there are arterioles. Uh, the diameter is regulated by vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Atherosclerosis affects elastic and muscular arteries, while hypertension affects small muscular arteries and arterioles. So just what is atherosclerosis? Well, it's essentially a decrease in the diameter of the large and medium-sized muscular arteries. This can be due to endothelial dysfunction, vascular inflammation, and the buildup of lipids, cholesterol, calcium, platelets, and other cellular debris around and within the intima of the arterial wall. These all cause a reduction in the diameter of the blood vessel, and therefore a reduction of blood flow past that potential blockage. Atherosclerosis is characterized by intimal lesions called atheroma or atherosclerotic plaque that protrude into the vascular lumina. They are raised lesions with a soft, yellow thick core of lipids covered by a white, fibrous cap. This works to obstruct the blood flow and weakens the blood vessel wall. This is a slow and progressive buildup. The effects of atherosclerosis are primarily felt in the elastic arteries, such as the aorta, the carotid arteries, and the iliac arteries. Large and medium-sized arteries, such as coronary and popliteal arteries, are also significantly affected. And in smaller arteries, the atheromas can gradually completely occlude the blood flow, causing an ischemic injury. Non-modifiable risk factors for atherosclerosis, and therefore the conditions and diseases that are caused by atherosclerosis include age, gender, where males have a greater risk than females, a family history, and therefore a genetic predisposition. Modifiable risk factors for atherosclerosis, and therefore modifiable risk factors for cerebrovascular disease and coronary artery disease include obesity, inactivity, postmenopausal estrogen deficiency, high carbohydrate diet, high lipoprotein and transunsaturated fat intake, chlamydia pneumonia infection, hypertension, smoking, and diabetes. Atherosclerosis progresses in the following way. Initially, there is a response to an injury, that is the atheroma. This is followed by a chronic inflammatory response, which leads to lesion progression through the interactions of lipoproteins and other cellular components of the blood. Soon, fatty streaks begin to get deposited, and on top of that, plaque formation occurs. All of these together slowly close the diameter, that is, the lumina, of the blood vessel. Although the buildup of plaque is very slow and occurs over time, that is, months and years, there can be sudden changes to the blood flow. This is caused because the atherosclerotic plaque is susceptible to rupture, ulceration, erosion, hemorrhage, embolism, and aneurysm formation. So therefore, although the formation of the plaque is quite slow, one of those precipitating events can cause changes very quickly and suddenly cork up, that is, completely interrupt the blood flow to the affected tissues. Symptoms to this sudden change in blood flow are consistent with where that blood flow is interrupted too. So we could be looking at things like myocardial infarction, stroke, aneurysms, and peripheral vascular diseases. 
Prevention of atherosclerosis is divided into primary and secondary interventions. Primary prevention occurs when no complications yet exist. And they, they include smoking cessation, hypertension control, weight loss, exercise, statins if needed because the cholesterol levels do not fall with increased activity, and you should know that these dietary risk factors may need to be addressed as early as childhood. Secondary prevention occurs when complications already exist. At that point, you should start the patient on aspirin or an antiplatelet aggregate, statins, beta blockers. They may need surgery, including carotid endarterectomy or coronary artery bypass and grafting, because surgeries can reduce the reoccurrence of the symptomology and conditions caused by atherosclerosis. So to summarize, atherosclerosis is caused by lesions in the blood vessel intima. It is driven by dietary and inflammatory interactions. It develops slowly over time, but symptoms may occur suddenly, for instance, in myocardial infarction, stroke, and peripheral vascular disease, all of which are byproducts of atherosclerosis. Early recognition and interventions are key to treating atherosclerosis. That does conclude this episode. However, more cardiac episodes are pending. As always, I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you plan on coming back to listen to some more. And if you are, we'll see you then.